Hello everyone, welcome to the Darkest Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the Halloween episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Hypnotic Halloween. Now this episode is unique, and I'm unique compared to regular episodes and other Halloween episodes. For one, basically this episode is pretty much two halves. One that's 100% all the action, and the other that's all the Rangers shenanigans. So let's start with the action half of the, of the episode, which is the second half. The Rangers are late dealing with a Robotron who is created off screen called Spiketron based off a fork and he's a Scrozzle and they've just about captured a truck full of more facts. That is until the Rangers show up and Scrozzle heads on out of there. And most of this battle is really spent on showing the full transformations and all the poses, special effects and camera shots for all the Rangers attacks more so than the actual fighting. So much so in fact that we get to see in the entire Megazord creation sequence and not just a shortened version of it, as well as summoning the Zords. The on-ground battle, nothing much happens. So we go into the Giga Drone battle, which first Devin and Zoe attack it. It seems like they're doing damage, but instead, it splits off into a second one because it's a Delta model again. So they take damage from having to fight two of them. Luckily, Robbie shows up in the Wrecker Zord. Yes, I remember the name this time. To lend a hand, and they quickly form the Beast X Megazord. Even that's not enough because it gets broken apart pretty quickly from attacks, both because it's powerful and also because two thirds of it have been damaged shortly before the Megazord formation. Now on the ground, Nate and Steel are able to quickly finish it with the Striker Beast Slash, pretty much using the Sabers and the Striker Blasters to really blow them up. And now we can see these Zords act as vehicles, mainly Nate's as the Wrecker Zord because it's basically a giant crane. <laughs> That can also house the Jet Zord on top of it. I mean, Jet Zord basically runs off and does some blasts on the spike drones, and then Nate destroys one by having the Wrecker Zord just pick it up the crane and toss it across the city so it explodes. For the other one, he goes into battle mode, and he uses the crane to pretty much stab it and then charge it with electricity to deal damage. But that isn't all, because the Wrecker Zord has enough energy to fire some rockets at it, while the crane is still lodged inside the Giga Drone. From that point, the finishing move is that the Jet Sword rides on the rear of the crane and just smashes straight through the Giga Drone and destroying it. That is just great. <laughs> so yeah, nice Zord showcase, but absolutely nothing that happens on the ground at all. <laughs> Aside from nice animation for the finishing. But now to the first half of the episode of Why the Rangers Were Late. It's Halloween, and all the Rangers, except Devin, have gotten dressed up. And Devin haven't even made it to the room yet. But unlike Ninja Steel, thankfully, they're not some young adults going out trick-or-treating. No, they're instead gonna watch some scary movies. Which I say is a lot more appropriate for them. <laughs> that is until the website where they're watching the movie stream from is a trap by Scrozzle and it hypnotizes the Rangers. And they all believe that they really are what they're dressed up as. And they played a part extremely well. Nate and Steel are Frankenstein's monster and Dr. Frankenstein. Of course they had to have one that created the other. What else could they be? <laughs> now the only aspect they focus on just how ugly the monster part is and Nate is running from Steel. Zoe who thinks herself a Viking warrior and goes off in search of conquest. And then Ravi is Sherlock Holmes. And shortly after the team is split up, Sherlock Shaw is looking around the room thinking that something is suspicious and just examines random stuff with a magnifying glass for clues. And this is where Devin shows up. He's asking what's going on. And he quickly figures out that something ain't right. They've been hypnotized because he got the blue swirls in their eyes. And Ravi Holmes makes it clear that unless he's an officer of Scotland Yard, he's not going to acknowledge his authority or anything. So Devin quickly has to put together the disguise as an English policeman in full uniform and even pulls off the accent. And he says to Ravi that he's reporting a missing person. That person being Ravi Shaw. <laughs> So he describes how great of a person that he is. And yes, this is when we have our typical Halloween episode and it's a big flashback. And his moments are overcoming his fear of the dentist as well as helping out Joey in some martial arts training. And he says that this Ravi Shaw is an amazing person. And apparently just having a good mind of who you really are what is able to break the hypnotism. That is a weakness hit hypnotism if that's all it takes to break. <laughs> Scrozzle must have done this in a hurry. So the two of them figure out what they have to do, and to make it easier, Ravi orders Shaw to close the entire floor 8 
of Great Battle Force so that the others don't get away. Now Zoe, since she is extremely aggressive, Devin has to psych himself up to confront her as another Viking warrior. Oh, and Zoe is just attacking a vending machine, trying to get the food out of it. <laughs> and when she sees Ravi, she thinks he's an imposter and just trying to steal from her. So she tosses his axe at him and even has this glowing edge, sparkling like a sharp. But no, it's just rubber. And they really made that dramatic because they cut to the intro when it's flying at Devin. So he uses his Amorphia to shoot some water rider and just capture her. And he sits her down and tells her about one of the greatest warriors he've ever met. That being Zoe, always jumping into big problems. Because she's always the first to help people with the first one to jump in when there's an issue to take care of. And always quick to apologize. And her scenes is her helping out at the start of a series when she helped the attack the grid battle force and Evox showed up. As well as when she had a little dispute with Jazz over her missing tablet. And that's enough to help her. And Devin remarks that he's enjoyed getting into the vault more than he expected to. On the other hand, Nate and Steele are captured in the same manner, being tied up. And this time all three of them confront them dressed as doctors, saying that they can help. Now the way they talk to them, it's more like they're doing therapy than, you know, scientific doctors like Frankenstein. And for some reason, Zoe has this weird southern accent. It is just funny to listen to coming from her. <laughs> so yeah, they tell him that the two scientists that can help, called Nate and Steele, and they're so close to like brothers. And the only flashback for them is just how Steele was created by Nate, and how they have the same DNA. And this breaks him out of it. And Nate apologizes for calling him hideous. And Steele says, I know I'm not hideous, I'm stunning. Because of course that's something Steele would say. Immediately after that, we have the Robotron attack, which we already talked about. Now, after the Robotron attack, they're trying round two at attempting to watch a movie. And this time, a ninja jumps up and slashes a sword in front of them. But no, it's not an enemy, it's Devin. He finally got into this spirit of dressing up and getting into character. So he's enjoying himself now. And that's the episode. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. We got to see some nice, unique action for the Zord battles. The clip show was bad as it always is for these holiday specials in the recent years of Power Rangers. But this one's a little better in the fact that instead of showing off weird stuff with the monsters or anything, or being into a pumpkin dimension for being judged for their crimes, which is still really stupid, I have to say. <laughs> this time we got to see different aspects of the Rangers. And for someone just tuning in, we get to see glimpses of what's happened up to this point and who these Rangers are. As well as we get to see some really good acting on everyone's part. Especially Devin. Devin hasn't had a whole lot of stuff where he has to change the way he acts. He's mostly been a serious guy with. So seeing where he can just let loose and do some crazy personality in his acting was really great. It really shows his actor's potential. But Zoe, I never want to hear you do that southern accent again. Funny ones for a few seconds, but I don't want this to keep going. <laughs> so overall, this was an alright episode. You can skip it if you want, not gonna hurt you at all. It doesn't address the data chip saga one bit. I say skip the second half, but watch the first half because it's actually really entertaining, even with the clip show montage narration. It was still enjoyable, which is a big compliment I have to say compared to the other holiday clip shows where I just want them to be over with and I don't have a lot to say usually. So I find that to be a very good thing. So this has been Jargus and thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next real episode and until then, let their power protect you. It's morphin' time. For justice we fight with peace morphin'